And now we are going into the last panel discussion of today. And I need my clicker. Um, it's about artificial intelligence in manufacturing. And this is quite a hot topic right now. So our guests will discuss the potential of this technology for small and also for medium-sized companies. And they will talk about the readiness of the European companies to adopt AI solutions in their daily business. And they will also talk about the application of AI and which challenges can occur when integrating AI solutions. So please welcome with me our moderator for the se session, Yasmin Moratzade, who is the program manager of the AI Marketplace Austria, a connecting service of the AWS Austria Wirtschaft Service. Yes, of course, you can all come up. <laughs> So she was the one building and launching that AI marketplace in 2020, so she's an expert for that. Um, we also have on stage Adrian Bablock, um, who is a project manager at uh, EIT Manufacturing Central in Darmstadt, so one of our colleagues uh, from Germany. And he manages the so-called uh, Crosskick projects, which are projects between multiple EIT communities, so to say. And he works on projects for digitalized production test beds and also for artificial intelligence. We also have with us uh, Dimitris Katsikas, who is the CEO and co-founder of DCube, a spin-off uh, company that focuses on uh, driving diverse industry into the new area of Industry 4.0 and transforming them into factories of the future. Welcome, Dimitris. <laughs> and last but not least, we have uh, Rocha Salat, who is the CEO of Prenomics, a startup based in Barcelona, specialized in solving business challenges by the means of data and advanced analytics techniques. Thank you all for being here. Yasmin, take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to the session AI in Manufacturing. Uh, my name is Yasmin Moratzadeh, and I am the program manager of the AI marketplace of AWS, which is not Amazon Web Services, but uh, Austria Wirtschaft Service. Um, it's a public promotional bank. Uh, it's a public promotional bank of Austria. And um, thank you, EIT Manufacturing, for having me. Um, I will be your moderator for the next 30 minutes. And uh, I have amazing guests with me, and they came from abroad. Um, and this is really amazing. Thank you, guys, for joining us today. Um, we actually said that I will do the introduction, but uh, you were introduced before. <laughs> so um, I will start off with the session description. So all of you know what to expect from the next 30 minutes. And um, in advance, I would like to tell you that we would like to make the discussion a bit more interactive. Um, so we will leave like a period in the end where we would like to take on your questions. Um, or your, um, your arguments or your opinions about what we are talking about. Um, so yes, keep that in mind, prepare your questions. So uh, we will discuss artificial intelligence um, as one of the predominant topics in the manufacturing world right now. However, uh, a significant part of the companies do not uh, recognize AI as a relevant technology or they have misconce misconceptions of the technology um, yeah, and wrong uh, realities of what it can do. And in this session, we will discuss the potential of the technology for either corporate and SME uh, perspectives. And uh, moreover, we will focus on the readiness level of European companies to adopt AI solutions to their businesses. And uh, we have two startups, one from Barcelona, one from Greece, and then we have Adrian from EIT Manufacturing, uh, CLC East, right, from Germany, right, based in Germany. CLC Central then. Yes. CLC East in Vienna. Yeah, right, sorry. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, I'm wondering if I should, I should add my introduction or if we should just start off because I have quite a good text prepared <laughs> to introduce all the <laughs> participants. So, all right. So, Roger, um, CEO and co-founder of Prenomics, right? Founded in 2000, uh, 2018 from Barcelona. And um, they, the company offers standardized solutions, holistic solutions in the field of data science, especially for SMEs. Um, 
Then we have Adrian, uh, who is at EIT Manufacturing CLC Central since June 2021. And um, he's responsible for cross-sector topics in the areas of artificial intelligence and testbed development, mainly driving innovation projects forward. He has like a mixed uh, background in me mechanical engineering and business administration and then going to consulting. And then we have Dimitris, um, who is a challenge-driven engineer and believes in innovation, uh, in that innovation is the intersection of world-leading research with customer needs, wants, and ambition. Currently, he is the CEO and uh, co-founder of D-Cube, a spin-off company from the biggest research institution in Greece um, that focuses on driving diverse industries into the new Industry 4.0 era by transforming them into factories of the future. So let's kick it off. Um, you will get to introduce your, your um, companies during the questions as well. And first off, I would like to start with you, Adrian. So let's, let's kick it off with what is meant by AI in manufacturing. Well, I think that's a um, pretty valid question. And uh, depending on who you ask it to, actually you will get different answers because I think the perception is uh, everybody thinks about a factory with no man involved, with just, let's say, an AI system steering a robotic automated production line. But um, I think this is a misperception because we, when we think about the normal planning time we have right now, this will not come into fruition in the next five years or something like this because we are not that far yet, and also we, we cannot change everything to that that fast. Um, what right now is more of a reality is uh, some artificial intelligence solutions um, targeting small parts of the manufacturing process, not just the manufacturing process, but also the product process, the development process, the business processes in itself. Um, if we go into manufacturing, we have, for example, a lot of solutions in the measurement sector, in non-destructive testing, and in quality inspection. Um, if you go to a use case, I think machine vision, ma machine vision is one of the main topics used right now for inline inspection uh, inside of a production, um, which makes then, of course, the, the quality control in the end a little bit obsolete. But that's, I think, what, what we can talk about. If you're going into a little bit of the development sector, we, we have a little bit of the data used in the product. So um, let's say more in the influence of the user experience taking um, going in into the development process. So you have, of course, to, to summarize all the data you have. You have to collect the data from the user experience and then bring it into your product development cycle, uh, influencing the constraints you have which is a challenging task for everybody, but uh, really valuable also. And if you look at the business creation, you have this possibility that um, you have an innovation project and uh, with the data collected of past and present machinery, um, you can f try out a decision and uh, let it roll out just, let's say, uh, by a software, including, let's say, the energy consumption in the future, the energy, energy prices in the future, as well as the, let's say, evolvement of the CO2 footprint in the future, and then evaluate your own innovation project by this. That's actually one project we had right now in one of the test beds, um, which is pretty interesting. But um, what I would say, if we really talk about AI, what is AI? For now, I think it's just the collection of data and the processing of this data over the all uh, development and manufacturing chain. If it is collecting data at the product, bringing it back to the manufacturer, is it taking data from the manufacturing process in itself and bringing it back to the development process of, of the producer in itself? I think this is what we should call right now AI and this is where we stand on. And uh, this is, I think, the, the starting point right now for us. Um, thank you for, for your uh, insights. So I think we, we got an overview now of what AI and manufacturing can mean. But uh, Dimitris, can you give us some insights on the current status in manufacturing companies with regard of AI? Yes, of course. 
Well, let's see. If you think about it, uh, artificial intelligence as a, as a concept uh, is there for, for some decades, right? But, but only the, the past five years or so, the, the uh, computing processing allowed for, let's say, delivering business value to, to, to corporates. So this is a major shift uh, in uh, the whole European, let's say, um, uh, economy regarding uh, AI. Um, to the best of my knowledge, and uh, large, large companies are, uh, are not that, that willing to, to transform, actually. They, they either identify AI technologies as not relevant, or it's, it's really hard to persuade them that there is actually a business value uh, um, behind the, the implementation of uh, such solutions. But AI is not, they, they have to realize not only them, technology providers, large companies, and uh, all the players in uh, uh, the AI ecosystem, that AI is not a technology. It actually brings a new reality. And this new reality is, is about uh, transforming the mentality of, of how, let's say, traditional sectors, industrial manufacturer sectors actually operate. Um, just to put it in simple words, two years, two years ago, we could say that deep learning algorithms or AI l uh, algorithms would be more on the technology side. If, if uh, to give a percentage, it would be 80%. Of, uh, on the technology side uh, and 20% uh, on the data. Uh, nowadays, it's, it's a totally different uh, scenario. It's the other way around, actually. We don't need, technology has, has reached a certain, uh, let's say, uh, state of the art uh, uh, level. But, but data is much more critical to, to uh, set up let's say, what, what a term that it's, a, it's been there for decades again. It's called data strategy. To, to collect the right data, uh, to collect them in the right way, to, to preserve them, and to um, extend them and expand them in order to have a machines that, that, that do not operate in the standard way only, because that, that's what AI is about. It's, it's about, if I may say, although, um, uh, it it much, might sound strange. It's, it's about replicating, in, in many cases, uh, a human brain. It's about training a, 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 a machine to start thinking in a more accurate way with 100% repeatability. So this is a major challenge. This is something that large, that large companies and, of course, technology providers uh, have to take uh, uh, into uh, under serious consideration. Um, and as we speak, I think we, we are at the very beginning of the, the learning and the implementation uh, uh, regarding, let's say, the, the, the maturity curve on the AI solutions. So, yes, this new reality is something that we need to uh, embrace and, and work for it because in order to climb higher on that maturity curve, uh, all players should be present and active. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I see you had some experiences with large companies being a bit restricted against the transformation. Yes. yes. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. So, um, Roger, you work with SMEs mostly. Um, what is your experience with their stage in AI right now? Well, um, the, the reality is that in, in SMEs, AI has a very big problem, and the problem is called um, return on investment. Like, it's a very big buzzword that we are having today, but the big problem that they are facing is that um, although they have been doing some prototypes or although they have been doing some projects um, towards this direction, they, when they put the numbers of the returns, they, they see that it's difficult for them to justify the investment. Although um, companies that successfully manage to implement this kind of solutions um, are, are, are really success cases in their sectors and are, and are driving the development, right? So in that sense, what we observe that, that actually helps them very much um, to focus their efforts and, and actually um, improve in that direction and is something that most SMEs do not have properly and want what 
where they start implementing that, they, they improve. The first, the first thing is to align the strategy with the um, data guys or the technical guys. Um, and this doesn't mean to make just one single roadmap, but to create a space where they can discuss um, recurrently in order to align the priorities, in order to focus on what the business needs the data science people to focus on. Then there's a second very important challenge, and is the challenge of, um, have, similar to what you were saying, no? the challenge of how to, how to bring the data all together in one place, how to um, have this minimum lean data infrastructure that allows to create the data solutions and deploy the algorithms as well easily, because if the solutions are not in, in a productive environment where they execute every day and they support the day-to-day -day decision making or the, or, or the services they offer, then these solutions are, 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 really, are, are not empowering the business um, to its future, right? And, and then there's a huge challenge they have as well um, regarding talent, um, like, who is the, in order to develop a, a proper data solution, you need data engineers, data scientists, business data analysts, and having this kind of talent internally, um, it's, it's difficult for a big corporate and it's even more difficult for an SME. Um, and the alternative of having a trusted partner that I think that we're gonna cover afterwards, um, it, it's as well difficult. And in that regard, if you do not have the talent to develop this kind of solution, um, or implement this kind of solution, it's, it's as well um, something a little bit tricky. So I would say that return on investment and to solve this return on investment, um, the, the big part is this strategy with data alignment, the part of the infrastructure, minimum lean infrastructure in order to build um, solutions that are gonna be useful um, to create new projects, and finally, how to solve this, this um, talent um, disposition. Thank you. Um, so we have heard now a lot about the challenges and uh, there are similarities. So we've heard about the mentality transformation, about uh, companies wanting uh, quick results, uh, quick return on investment, data structures and strategy that is not given, lack of talent. But um, let's talk about how we can overcome um, those challenges. Adrian, what, what is your perspective and what is your experience in this case well um i think uh, my colleagues already said a lot of valid points we have here we have um let's say some difficult topics to address here we have one the cultural side uh, one the let's say the business side the, the return of invest side so um, let's maybe start with the cultural side so artificial intelligence for somebody who's let's say not that uh, not a digital native or not that into software production in itself will also be some kind of, of a demon maybe or something taking away my work. So for me, the first part, if you really want to go into this topic, you have to include everybody involved. That means from management till the worker at the line, uh, involve everybody into the project, uh, hear them out, try to... Um, try to take away the fear of this thing taking away the jobs because in the end what we know artificial intelligence will not take away it make it make easier and make it make it different yeah so so this is the, the first point in itself um, the other thing is of course democratizing a little bit of AI because uh, we, we talked about it not every company has a data scientist not every company has a data manager because we have not enough for it. And if it goes on and on like this, we will never be able to, to have enough of them. Uh, so we have to a little bit democratize the, the knowledge about this, not just in specific directions, but let's say a, a whole about the whole company. And uh, what we did to, to enhance this a little bit is we, we have an AI maturity tool um, designed uh, together with the VTT, which is the Finnish Research Institute, uh, and rolled it out through all of Europe. Um, it's just for a, a, on a very basic level, asking if you're already ready for AI, for the usage of AI. It's 12 questions, you can do it in 10 minutes, no problem, everybody can do it. Um, 
You can find it also on our website. It's just 12 questions, 12 e questions to, to find out, okay, do you have the standardization needed? Do you have the data collected already in one point? How do you collect data? Do you, don't you collect data at all? That's, let's say, more on a technical point. Yeah? So that's the first step you can do. And from that point on, of course, we, we will also like to um, propose a workshop together with us, with solution providers, where we can then make a roadmap where to start, because in the end, you're not starting with an, a fully automated machine, and uh, a digital twin or something like this. You're starting low, because if you want to take away the fear, you have to show that it's working, and that's why you're starting with small implementations, low challenges in itself to show to everybody it's working and it's helping. And if you have this trust in the people, then you can go from this point on to the next steps. So um, so, so the, the maturity tool, the AI maturity tool, which is great that something like that is implemented um, and is free of charge and accessible for every company, Europe. Yeah, everybody can do it. Yeah. It's free of charge. It's just where, of course, we are collecting a little bit of the data. We want to analyze the, um, uh, how, it, let's say, the, the, the readiness on AI is in Europe in itself. Yeah, it's accessible in seven languages, so everybody can also, you don't have to speak English. You have it, I think, in French, English, Spanish, Italian, uh, Polish also, uh, uh, and Finnish. So... Everybody can, I think, I hope that's enough languages. If not, we can make a little bit more of that. But uh, I, I think for, for a first check, this should be sufficient. And uh, if there are more questions, we are always open to, to answer or to help them. Yeah. Great. So um, we, how, because you are in, in the reality, you are companies that really work with, um, with companies and you try to, um, explain to them what they can do with AI, you try to get them as a customer. What is your experience with uh, in, in reality and um, how can your products and your solutions, how do their, your solutions help your customers um, to implement AI and to use AI solutions? I don't know, Dimitris, if you want to start. Sure. Well, uh, yes, indeed. Um, well, I, I will try briefly to explain our flagship product because it's actually an, a, an AI solution for the manufacturing sector. Um, we call it Cyrus. This stands for Cyber Physical System for Aluminum Extrusion Companies. It's a strategic decision that we do a machine vision system for a specific um, sector, the aluminum one. Um, so, what we do... Um, we, it's a typical machine vision system, uh, but the, the key word is, the key word is that I, this is in line. So despite the traditional um, quality assurance, uh, let's say, methods that, for example, take a random piece of the material and inspect it offline, the, the key now or the, 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 the trend is to perform surface inspection on every uh, piece of, of the material. Uh, in, in this case, the aluminum extrusion uh, extruded uh, material. So what we do with, uh, with AI, we have developed an, a, a multi-layer AI framework in order to um, detect defects on the material as uh, on, on the rolling table. Uh, this is the first level of uh, AI, and the second level is processing all this data from the defects that we, we get in real time in order to identify patterns of, secu of uh, recurring defects. Uh, and the, the, the outcome of all this processing is that we provide meaningful or smart alerting to the machine operators. This is not a closed loop yet system. This is, this is a, a, an ambition uh, because um, uh, in our opinion, human in the loop is gonna be something uh, that would last forever. So as Andrea said, AI systems are not meant to replace uh, to, to uh, people, uh, they're, they're meant to, to be part of the upskilling process. Um, and since uh, October 2020, that we've been uh, honored with the first place in the first boost up uh, uh, ever organized, uh, we, we have even transformed ourselves from a, a typical software company, because we're coming from the electrical engineering field, 
to equipment manufacturing. So what we actually offer to our clients is a machine. And, and, and to be honest, manufa the manufacturing sector uh, needs to, 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 to get something tangible. That's, that's their culture. That, that's what they used to. Uh, although, of course, the innovation is, is uh, still on the software side. Uh, so, uh, to, to provide some tangible results, uh, and although aluminum is 97% recyclable, so it's, it's, it's an amazing material that, that uh, always, it, it, it keeps gain, uh, gaining space against other metals, but uh, we have managed to save, let's say, more or less one euro per produced kilo of scrap material. This translates into, into some, uh, let's say, thousands of, of euros on per machine on an annual basis. Uh, this is, this, these are the results that we're capable of uh, delivering um, right now. And uh, as we speak, uh, because we started uh, um, as an AI manufacturer from using a test bed a plant uh, in, in Greece, uh, after three years of, of hard work, we are, we're now setting up uh, the, our system, Cyrus, in two of the largest aluminum extrusion industries in Europe. So this is a major uh, milestone for us and looking forward to, to the next steps. But yes, AI is capable and uh, it, it, let's say it's, it's capable of, of delivering business value that, that it is measurable. That's the key, uh, the key point. Okay, um, Roger, what about you? And then we will take on questions from the audience. Okay, perfect. So to, to provide a, a little bit of context in, in our case, we have um, one technological branch and one, and one consulting branch. The technological branch is basically one data platform that allows and one module to collect data from any source to the uh, data lake or a data warehouse. Then we have a module to compute algorithms and to deploy algorithms, AI algorithms into, into a productive environment. Then we have a module as well that allows to create interactive tools um, for business users with data and with algorithms. This is very interesting in order to, like, as well as Dimitris was saying, um, because the human always needs to be in the loop, and it's important that algorithms interact with, like the people can interact with these algorithms. And then we have a module of inter integrating the data and the algorithms with transactional systems um, at companies. Okay, And with this platform, we can deploy um, in an agile manner, um, this data infrastructure that allows to um, um, easily um, build um, data solutions and, and scale up in, in, in the data roadmap of a company. And to provide a concrete example of, of a client of us and a, and a project that we did, um, that I, I think that have some learnings, this is the case of a manufacturing company of um, sports, clothes, and, and, and shoes. Um, that they supply themselves from, from China and they sell um, all over the world. They are located in, in Spain. And in that case, they asked us to build for them um, a, a, a specific thing, an, an AI tool that assisted the purchasing department in the decisions of um, when to purchase products um, of different models to, to the different partners they have. Um, so, yeah, after discussing and aligning with them the, the project scope, when we ended up there, we realized that um, the actual mechanism that they were using and the actual data that they had to take this decision was, um, was super bad, was very aggregated data, and they could not make um, sophisticated analysis in order to gather the, what was going on behind the trends um, on this data. And, and not only that, but when we asked the data to the ERP supplier, the data did not match the data that the people from the purchasing department had. So in that context, doing an AI solution is very, very um, hard and maybe not the best option for them. So in that case, we needed to um, actually bring the point to the table of the managing directors. We shifted a little bit the approach, and first of all, we focused in creating a lean version of a data warehouse in order to bring this data together, to model it, to create a business intelligence tool in order for them to consume this data, and this was the first milestone in order for them to actually take way better decisions. And here, AI did not enter, but it did not make sense to enter with AI if this part was not already solved. 
And then we started, when this was already working and they already can could make better decisions, we started with the part of the forecasting algorithm, um, the interaction tool for them with this algorithm. And we did this algorithm, um, the first um, iteration, with a, a subset of all the categories they had in order to be fast, to do it, to deploy it, and for them to test it. Um, now, like with the some iterations that we have done, we are generalizing the tool to all the families they have. But what I mean with that is that it's very, very important um, not to put the horse um, like, um, like, like, like not, not, to, not to build a house over the, the roof, like to start from the beginning. And then when you start with AI, try to make proof of concept projects first um, that validate the, the, the approach and then try to escalate it um, um, with working solutions that are already deployed um, into production. And to do that, um, relying on data platforms that help you um, speeds a lot the, the process up. Great. So I think those are really good, great examples of, of how to overcome uh, the challenges that companies are currently facing. And you are really living it uh, with each of your potential clients, I think. Um, so voices from the audience, what do you think? Uh, um, do you have some additional views on the topic or questions to one of the participants? Thank you. I would have a question to Dimitris. How do you, teaching the models, do you have enough uh, bad scenarios in no. terms of the use case what you mentioned? Enough what? Sorry, I didn't... Bad, bad uh, items to teach what oh. is bad and what is not. Okay, okay. Well, uh, yes. Well, we started back in 2017 because uh, uh, training, as you probably know, a, a, a neural network, uh, requires time and a vast amount of data. So um, we did that. The original training, let's say, was with more than uh, 3,000 dice and, and images from these, these physical dice. But this is not the point so far. That's why I was explaining that it's the other way around. Now we have the technology allows for swallow networks with, with uh, let's say, not that vast amount of data, uh, and we can we can achieve a performance that is similar with with accuracies, uh, uh, let's say more than ninety percent. So, but the good thing about the the training and all the models, and maybe some of the industries would would realize that this is a relevant technology for them, is that it's capable of generalizing. So, once you train them on a specific data set, it's capable of understanding what has been taught against in different and, and, and what we call unseen data. This is the key and this is, let's say, the, uh, an advantage. You're welcome. Any other questions? Over there. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much for this great session. Uh, I would like to ask a general uh, question. Uh, what do you consider as probably a major challenge of implementing AI AI in manufacturing in the coming, let's say, years, based on your experience? I didn't, I didn't get uh, it, sorry. What is your major, uh, what you consider as the major challenge of uh, implementing uh, AI in manufacturing in the coming period? For, for me, the, the biggest challenge in that regard is um, how to, like, th there are two approaches here. The approach of um, relying on different partners in different, um, um, in, in, in different parts of your value chain, and then, or, or trying to develop this in-house or with a reliable partner um, from, from inside, no? Um, when you build that with partners, the good thing is that you're buying the solution. But the high risk you have is of data being not integrated one with the other. And here you have one problem, how you bring this data together. And when you build that internally, is on how you provide, how you create this, inf this data infrastructure that is well ordered and allows you to escalate properly the solutions that you are going to be building. Like um, in, in clients that we have, we can see clearly that when we have developed one solution, um, building another solution that touches similar data is way, 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 way faster. 
but if you have not planned that um, in a proper way, then you are building isolated islands that make AI very expensive. Um, so I think a, a very big challenge in that regard is that um, how we bring together this um, being fast and, and using solutions that are already there, um, assuring that we are building everything in a structured way that is going to make us able to uh, scale these kind of solutions. All right. Um, do you want to add something quickly? Yeah, on because that, we ran just, out of just time. yeah, I know. I just just pretty quickly on on that topic. I think also the let's say retrofitting of AI to uh, new technology and so will be something that will come up in the future years. Yeah, because you have now an AI system teached with this with let's say a defined sensor module or with a designed system in itself. And when you have a new one, a new machine, and you want to bring it in, this will have to make uh, robust again. If if not foreseen in uh, in the first tests yeah we we are we are we ran out Two of time words. ip <laughs> that's the, the the absolute bottleneck of ai ip, IP, IP rights ip rights okay so uh, the topic is very uh, we we just scratched it on on the surface it is a very it's a, it is a topic where we could talk for hours about it uh, so yeah grab a drink with us and uh, hope to discuss it the topic later on with you thank you very much Thank you.